Hi, and welcome to the second roundtable discussion at CELSA. I'm Marie Duzema, a journalist and an international advisor here at the school, and I have with me today Joe Walther, a professor of communications at Michigan State University, and Etienne Kandel, an assistant professor here at CELSA and a member of the GRIPIC research group. Uh, if I could ask you to start by talking a little bit about your work, what brought you to this field? Um, both of you work on questions of culture, technology, identity formation, and interpersonal relations. Um, if you could talk a little bit about what brought you to this field and some of the things that you're working on that fascinate you the most right now. Joe, if you could start, please. Sure, I'd be glad to. I've been looking at computer-mediated communication since uh, about the time the internet uh, got the name internet and diffused. And uh, at that time, uh, the dominant questions were how do we tell who somebody is? How do we tell if somebody has a personality, or if they're male or female? I mean, these fundamental questions. And I've been working on trying to develop theories and empirical research that show the processes and how they develop over time. So we recognize each other and uh, initiate relationships uh, uh, online in various contexts. Uh, well, that was then. This is now. And now we have Web 2.0 systems where the identities of the individuals online are very clear to us now. We see who is a seller and who is a consumer. We see who's an information asker and who's an information giver. And we see uh, who are peers and who are people who are different than us. Uh, we do that very fluidly now. And those are the questions that, that I'm studying now is what does it mean to relate to these different individuals in Web 2.0 in different ways? Thanks, Joe. Sure. Etienne? So um, I began working in communication studies, especially on uh, digital communication uh, phenomena uh, about 10 years ago. I was a student in here in a, as a PhD candidate. And before that I was, uh, and that's very important, I was in uh, literature or linguistic studies. And my turn to communication uh, was um, um, relying on uh, the, the importance uh, for me to question how, for instance, how an author become, becomes an author, what, uh, what processes in the social world um, help building this statute and uh, status, and how uh, the role of uh, writing or reading are built uh, in the texts. So it led me to uh, consider the, the different digital um, screens we have and how uh, texts are produced and uh, read on these screens. And so to, to have a, a, an insight on the role of um, um, editing structures on the mediations of culture. So, for instance, I first uh, made my whole PhD study uh, dissertation paper about uh, the question of um, uh, participatory pra practices and how uh, literary criticism uh, is shared and built within this the, these uh, structures. Earlier these last years, I've worked on questions about the, um, uh, the encounters between uh, technique uh, issues, technical issues, and um, uh, cultural uh, semiotical objects. For instance, uh, how do you evaluate things, how evaluation practices are central for the development of uh, web, uh, of the web, uh, the whole internet, and how uh, these cultural practices are, um, are written online. Etienne, if I may ask a question, when you talk about somebody becoming an author, are you talking about the author of a web page, a mm. website, or just uh, writing their own text in email to somebody? Thank you for the question. The, the whole question deals with the, how you may act towards the screen, for instance, to, um, to have a comment written uh, in, these, in, the, in the places uh, open for that. So the whole work of uh, an editing uh, structure will be to lead people, lead readers to mm -hmm. uh, take place into the, the whole uh, structure and, um, and choose what to write. But these models of writing, the different types or genres you, you may uh, uh, convoke in such a, a process, uh, will have a very important determining place for the different practices. So this is just the same um, 
we have the same questions about how uh, you recognize or acknowledge somebody to be uh, uh, dignified enough to write, mm -hmm. or how you will uh, feel that some, somebody is a buyer. Uh, social roles are things that are built. Uh, we have to um, uh, slip inside them and, uh, um, let's say, act, uh, for instance, as a buyer. Sure. So your, your points of view or your uh, questions about the um, way you feel uh, and you determine these uh, existing social rules uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are very interesting for me too. <laughs> so I'll ask you, how, how do you do to, to determine these uh, social qualifications of people? Well, I, I, tend, I tend to find that uh, once people, I, 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 I don't look as you do as, at, as much as how people approach mm -hmm. the, the inception of, of, of the task of writing online, uh, which, is, which could be very formidable. Rather, I've really focused on how people adapt to the technology and how people uh, who do not have their nonverbal behavior at their disposal when they uh, go to type text how they adapt their language and their timing mm -hmm. in order to present themselves the way they wish to be seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there, is the, there is the process of, of decoding people uh, who we encounter, but there's also the process of, en process of encoding who we wish to be and how we wish to be seen. Mm -hmm. And people are much better with language than they tend to think they are, mm -hmm. uh, in, in my experience. So people are always apprehensive about not having the facial expressions and gestures at their disposal. But it does not take long in an online conversation with anyone, whether it's a, a real time uh, or an email system. It does take some time, but not too much time before people know how to express themselves. And it seems to become quite natural to them. Now whether they would express themselves the same way face to face or not is a completely different question. But uh, the people are facile with words know how to use them, and with timing, I think, becomes apparent to them uh, through the process, but not, as you might say, at first. Mm -hmm. And so your approach would be some kind of uh, rhetoric, rhetorics or linguistics, uh, um, built-up linguistics? Well, it, it, it often involves that, but usually not at first. I mm -hmm. usually uh, engage users in experiments of, some, of one kind or another, and, uh, and and present them with different kinds of conditions, uh, mm -hmm. different different technology attributes, different time frames, different kinds of partnerships, for instance, and see how these different conditions shape the way they get to know one another. I think in most of my research, we first try to measure outcomes with questionnaires and and uh, such techniques as this. We we look at uh, people's perceptions of of their partners, what they think of one another, how well developed their impressions are, how much they like one another. Mm -hmm. So these are subjective responses that we, we try to measure in, uh, in quantitative surveys. Uh, but then once we think we see something, then we dig in and, and try to do the analysis. So we'll look at the language. We will look at uh, how the discourse seems to accommodate the emotional cues and the personality cues that usually do not, uh, that usually don't take place in speech so much or at least not in the linguistic aspect of speech. And so we're very interested in the language, but first we like to see if there is some perceptual effect that the users themselves can tell us about. Hmm. Yeah, there's uh, something very interesting. Uh, it was there before the internet, because we had, we had uh, already discussions uh, about it in the, in the 80s, but you, uh, it's a very common representation that the you cannot know, you cannot really know the people that are uh, behind their screens and uh, computers on the other side of the planet. Or, and so, but there's something very interesting. For instance, you, if you imagine someone uh, having a, um, a seduction discussion with someone, uh, the person will probably lie about uh, oneself and uh, herself. Um, or invent some things because it will be easier, or sometimes really cheat uh, about uh, what uh, her, she is. Whereas we know it's not uh, true, we don't know what the truth is, there are some kind of dynamics uh, leading us to continue with uh, exchanging with people 
like uh, just as if it was uh, central for us to believe in such things and there's an ideology um, um, leading and uh, determining or conditioning uh, representations of uh, what's happening. We communicate, we don't know exactly with whom, we know there might be lies and that's probable but it's easier or more convenient for us to, to think, well, anyway, I'd like to continue and I'd like to represent myself uh, in a position of uh, perfect communication. And uh, I think it's uh, something very strongly um, bound to the fact that it's uh, digital technologies and that we have ideologies about, about these technologies. We think they will make us um, closer or more intelligent and so on. So we can continue with tasks that will lead us to uh, deception or to um, illness, and, uh, for illness, silliness <laughs> sometimes. But we continue because we believe in, the, in these. And that's where we uh, feel that technology is uh, um, meaningful too. Sure, I, th I think I agree with so much of what you said, Etienne, except one thing I know I do not agree with is where you said that these conditions you described about communication, mm -hmm. where we think we get to know somebody, but we don't really truly know mm -hmm. somebody. We know that somebody could be lying and misrepresenting themselves. I think that's true of the human condition, Etienne. I think that was very true of communication before digital technologies, and it remains true despite digital technologies. I think, I think society and researchers have built up a whole lot more suspicion about these problematic aspects of internet communication than truly exist. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that the kinds of things people say about themselves uh, across the globe are, are terribly false. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's very much uh, from like a Goffman perspective. We're always selecting the face that we present to the mm -hmm. world. We do, it, we do it in person and we do it online. I think we have different tools for doing it online. And we exercise those tools with great alacrity and great facility, mm -hmm. but it's not a new process. Um, Joe mm -hmm. and Etienne, I'm afraid we have to wrap things up, but thank you to both of you for being here today and for mm -hmm. discussing. I do feel like I got to know both of you a little bit better. I don't know how much I can actually trust that, but I think <laughs> I do. And I look forward to continued discussions, um, perhaps by email. Well, thank you very much. It's thank been a you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you to you both.